in this example, uh, I'm going to talk about how to take the Laplace transform of this product of functions. Okay, this is a basic example, uh, and the, I guess the underlying idea behind this example is to illustrate an idea known as the first shifting theorem. Now, Laplace transforms uh, involve, or are basically an integral transform, and to save us a little bit of time from a practical point of view, it's very common to use tables for Laplace transform. So down the left hand side you have functions of t and down the right hand side you have the corresponding Laplace transform. Now Laplace transforms are useful in solving uh, ordinary differential equations and also some p uh, partial differential equations. But as a first step it's always desirable to be comfortable with the basic ideas of Laplace transform. So you can go on and solve uh, more difficult problems. Anyway, so let's, let, let's say I was um, given this particular example. What I would like to do, if I'm going to use the table, is to look down the left-hand side and go, OK, is there a e to the t times sine t down the left-hand side? And if you look closely, well, no, there's not. But if you look down here, I've got e to the minus at times g of t. Now that is a general form of this product. See how it's an exponential times a function? Exponential times a function. So this is my, my first, I guess, um, clue as to how to actually evaluate this integral, uh, the, the Laplace transform. So let's use this. And if I look over here, a, a is a constant, by the way. If I look over here, I see it's big G of s plus a where big G of S is the Laplace transform of little g. Okay, this is the first shifting theorem. So the first shifting theorem is the following, okay? Laplace transform of this special product is this, where big G of S is the Laplace transform of little g of t. So why is this called the, a shifting theorem? Well, essentially what we do is we, we find this transform and then shift it, A units. Okay? Now, why is it called the first shifting theorem? Well, there's a second shifting theorem as well. Okay, but the, this is just a, a basic form. Okay, so in this example, A would be negative 1, and little g of t would be sine t. Okay, so let's calculate the transform of our little g of t and then shift it a unit. So we'll shift it, uh, you know, we'll basically replace s with s plus, uh, s plus a, essentially s with s minus 1. Okay. So in our example, we want to calculate the Laplace transform of sine of t. So, if we look down the table on the left-hand side, we get down to a sine. B is a constant in this uh, context. We look across, there's the transform. So, for our particular situation, we want B equals 1. So, the Laplace transform of sine t from the table is 1 on s squared plus 1 squared. And just to reinforce that I've used a table, I'm just going to write from table or table in brackets. Okay, so we haven't quite got this yet, this right-hand side. What we want to do is replace S with S plus A in brackets. Okay? So we take, we, we replace S here with S plus A in brackets, which is just S minus 1 in brackets.
and that's our transform. So let's, let's just write FST for the first shifting theorem. By the first shifting theorem, the Laplace transform of this special product is the following. Okay, so there's our first shifting theorem in a nutshell. Now you can see that a little note on technique, because the technique for these problems are the same. What, what we did was we identified A and little g. say G of T, calculate, then we calculated the transform, okay, and then finally replace S with S plus A. to obtain G of S plus A. Okay? So that's where we apply the first shifting theorem.